Welcome back Laravel developers. In the previous video, we explored how the repository pattern helps organize your data access logic by separating it from the rest of your application. But here is the big question. What if your application grows and you need to manage complex business rules beyond just data access? And do your controllers feel overloaded with business logic, database queries and too many responsibilities? Don't worry, we have got you covered. This is where the service pattern comes in. While the repository pattern handles database operations and the service pattern isolates your business logic into reusable and testable classes. By combining together, they create a perfect combination for writing clean, scalable and professional Laravel code. In this video, we will simplify your Laravel applications by using the service pattern. So this is a method to move all your business logic into separate reusable classes and keeping your controllers clean and easy to manage. So in today's video, we will cover what is the service pattern and why it matters in Laravel application. Thereafter, we will see how to implement this step by step in Laravel. Furthermore, we will talk about the tips to keep your Laravel code clean and scalable. So stick around until the end of this video where I will share practical advice to apply this pattern to your next project. So let's start by service pattern. The service pattern is all about keeping your business logic organized and reusable. So instead of dumping all the logic into your controllers, you delegate it to a dedicated class called service. Here is why this is a game changer for Laravel projects. This will help making clean controllers so that the controllers will only handle HTTP request and response. Also this will help making reusability of the business logic so that the service class can be reused across multiple controllers, jobs or even API endpoints. And also. For the testability purpose, this makes writing unit test for your business logic like a bridge. So in simple word, you can think of the service pattern as the middle manager between your controllers and the repository. So let me explain this. I will come to the code editor. So in the last video, we created this directory structure for implementing the repository design pattern. So in the app folder, we created interfaces and repositories folder. Inside interfaces, we created to do interface and inside the repositories we created a to do repository class. So here this was the working example of this repository design pattern in which we created the functionality to save and fetch to do's using repository pattern. So let's quickly recap the repository design pattern first. Inside app we have interfaces folder. Here we have the to do interface. Inside this to do interface we defined two functions get to do's and save to do. And this interface has been implemented in the repositories. So inside the repositories folder, we have one to do repository class. Here we can see we have the class to do repository and this is implementing to do interface. Okay. Inside this class, we have the definition of these two functions as get to do and save to do. In the get to do function, we are fetching all the to do list. And in the save to do function, we are creating a new to do list. And we have called this function in the controller. So we have the controller respective to this to do. Here we have the to do controller. This is a resource controller. So we have the resource functions. Here we have the constructor in which we have injected this to do interface directly. And by using this instance of this to do interface, we have called the get to do function. And this function has been implemented inside the to do repository class. All right. But we are calling this using the to do interface. And inside this index split, we have rendered those to do. Next, we have the store function. Here we created this to store the new to do list. Firstly, we are validating the form and then we are saving the validated data. All right. Here we have the save to do function. And again, we are calling this using this to do interface instance. And next, we bound the to do interface and repository in the service provider. So inside the providers folder, we have the app service provider. Here we bound the to do interface and to do repository. Okay. So this is all about the repository design pattern. And in today's video, we will combine the repository and service pattern together to make our controller more cleaned and organized. All right. So let's quickly come to this outline. So let me quickly demonstrate the directory structure that again we are going to follow. So we will have service here. This will be services directory basically. Inside this, 
we will have the to do service all right so this will be to do service class and let me add controller as well so that we will have a clear understanding so inside the controllers we have the to do controller all right so this is the current directory structure of this project inside http we have the controllers and inside the controllers folder we have the to do controller next we have the interfaces folder in the app folder and further we have the repositories okay now today we will create services directory as well and inside that we will create the to do service so the working flow of this structure will be like the http request will come to the to do controller first inside this i will call the to do service so the to do service will handle all the business logic and the business logic can contain your validation rules data separation any data handling thing all right now from the to do service i will call the to do repository via this to do interface so the controller will be responsible for handling the request and response only and all the business logic will be moved inside this to do service now from the to do service we will call this to do repository for the database operations so by following this architecture our code will be more organized and maintainable and also we can reuse the business logic as well so let's quickly create this to do service class so let's come to the terminal let me clear this i will create a new class as php artisan make colon class and firstly i will define the directory name as services inside this i will create the to do service let's hit enter yes the to do service class has been created inside the services folder let's check out this now inside app we have the services folder here inside this we have the to do service class okay now let's come to the controller here we have the to do controller so let's make some changes inside this to do controller constructor firstly instead of injecting this to do interface i will inject to do service class so let me remove this here i will inject to do service class and this instance will be to do service let's define the variables respective to this to do service here all right and this interface is no longer needed here and we will have to move these functions in the service class as well so i will change this to do interface to to do service next we have this save to do function so i have changed this to to do service now now let's come to the to do service and here we will have to define the function for get to do that we have called inside the to do controller this function okay and from this to do service we will call the to do repository so for calling the to do repository again i will go through the interface so inside the to do service constructor i will inject the to do interface and let's create the instance as well as to do interface all right let's define this variable here i will define public dollar to do interface and i will assign this here as dollar this to do interface is equals to to do interface this is fine this is our get to do function now from this function again i will call the get to do function which is defined inside the to do repository class so inside the to do repository we have this get to do function so i will call it from this service as to do interface get to do okay and we will have to return this so that this will come to the controller this is fine now same thing we will have to define one more function for this save to do so let's call this save to do function here this will save to do let's define this function save to do and here we will have to capture the form request data and that we are passing as a request here so let's define one variable as request all right now again i will call the save to do function which is defined inside the to do repository class here we have the save to do function so let's call this function using this instance to do interface 
save to do all right and here we will have to pass the data that we want to save so if i will come to the save to do function defined inside this to do repository previously we had created this array here all right this is array of data currently we have only two fields in the form now let's suppose you have more fields like 50 to 100 then in that case it is not a good practice to form a data set inside the to do repository because the to do repository is only responsible for handling the database operations all right so this is not responsible for handling your business logic so what i will do i will cut this array from here and i will form that array inside the service class itself and that's why we have defined this service class so this will be responsible for handling all the business logic related to this to do so here i will define the to do as a variable inside this i will paste that array all right and here we can pass this data directly inside this save to do function now if we come to the save to do inside the repository here we will have to capture that to do data or we can define to do request and directly we can pass this to do request in this create function just like this so now the repository class became more cleaner for handling the database operations only okay now if we come to the service class here we can reuse this data set for save to do and update to do as well so what we can do we can cut it from here and we can define one more function just like public function map to do form data all right and we can paste it here just like this and here in the function argument i will receive the form request data all right and this will return this array just like this now i will call this function inside the save to do function just like dollar this map to do form data and here we can pass the form request just like this and whatever this will return as an array we will have to capture that here just like dollar to do and after returning this to do form data in the form of array this will be passed inside the save to do function so this is save to do okay and this is organize to do form data let me add one annotation again for this function this is map to do form data this will map to do form data all right now we can see the difference here inside the save to do function we have captured the form request data from this controller okay and here we have separated the data based on the form request we have different fields currently we have only two fields but if you have more fields then this will be very helpful to reuse this function for save and update because you don't have to write this data organization thing again and again in different functions so we can reuse this function in multiple places so this will reduce the code redundancy here here we have the get to do function this is fine this is directly calling the get to do function which is defined inside the to do repository now in some cases if you have to map the data after fetching from the database then you can map that data here before returning this to controller so all your business logic can be written here only in this service class and your repository will be responsible for handling the database operations only also your controller will be responsible for handling request and response only now regarding this validation thing we can create a separate form request so i will come to the terminal i will create a form request using php artisan make request command and here i will pass the request name so i want to create to do form request just like this let's hit enter to do form request has been created inside the request folder if we'll come to the http requests we have the to do form request and all the validation roles can be defined here so let me make this to true so that we can perform the authorized request here and inside the rules function we can set our validation rules so i will move the entire validation rule just like title will be required here 
next we have the description okay and what i will do i will remove this request validate from here and instead of illuminate http request i will inject to do form request all right so all the validation things will be handled inside this to do form request and once the data is validated it will come to this controller and here we will have the sanitized and validated data only and from here this will call the save to do function and this will call to this to do service now our request will come to this save to do function inside this we have organized the to do form data by calling another function here here we have formed a new array and that returned the to do array data and that array data has been passed inside the repository by calling this save to do function and this will call to this to do repository save to do function okay this is fine now let's come to the index.blade file inside the resources views we have the to do's folder and inside this we have the index.blade let me change the title here this is repository plus service design pattern all right here we have the form validation added so let me come to the browser and let me refresh this application now let's try to submit the form here we can see the validation has been triggered and the validation rule has been defined in the form request we can customize the validation error message from there so inside the to do form request i will create a separate function for overriding the default validation error message so this will be messages and again this will return array inside the function we will have to return the array and let's override the message as title dot required this will be please enter the to do title same thing for the description to do description this is fine this will return the validation error messages let's come to the browser let's refresh now let's try to submit the form we have the customized validation error messages here now let's try to create another to do here to do using repository and service pattern all right let's click on submit here this thrown a message as unable to create to do uh, but here we can see in the list that to do has been created so i guess we have some issue while capturing the to do response so let's check out the code inside the controller we have captured the to do data and this should return from this service save to do function so let me check out the to do service oh yes here we have not returned that to do data after creating it from the repository all right so now once the to do has been saved in the repository that will return that to do object here and this will be captured inside the to do controller that's why we have added one condition if that to do has been created then only this will come inside this block so let's come to the browser let's refresh now let's try to create another to do list to do list using design patterns in laravel 11 let's click on submit yes we can see we have received that to do has been created message so that's it and congratulations you have just learned the service pattern in laravel 11 so by combining the repository plus service design pattern together this is a huge step toward writing professional scalable and maintainable laravel applications if you found this video helpful give it a thumbs up and subscribe the channel for more laravel design patterns tutorial in the next video we will dive into the observer pattern and see how laravel makes event driven architecture simple and elegant and if you have any questions about today's tutorial please drop them in the comments below I would love to help you out so thanks for watching see you soon in the next video until then happy coding